So hoping that you enjoyed your coffee, I will continue. This is at KIT. My name is Samuel Braun. Uh, I'm from the Steinbruch Computing Center. And yeah, I'm happy to uh, share my uh, our experience with all of you. The standard outline, first of all, what is NVIDIA, uh, NVIDIA's Enroute? How does NVIDIA see in Enroute? Um, I think that the best way to get to know how it works is uh, just how to, a quick step-by-step -step introduction. Then um, that's basically just the center part, what we think of Enroute. And then I give you a, a small example what we did with this Enroute. Um, so basically it's, it's just a sample application. And then there's room for questions. Uh, before I start, um, the, the Enroute and Pyxis project websites are also the, the source for the documentation, which is both on the GitHub site. Uh, at KIT, we have our own um, user documentation uh, based off MKDocs. So unfortunately, um, so these uh, Pyxis um, specific uh, features are not yet included, but they will be uh, inserted um, soon. So how does NVIDIA see Enroot? And uh, what first question, what is, was the motivation to start yet another container runtime? Uh, so um, we had a, a, a meeting with the main developers of Enroot and Pyxis, and it was quite interesting what was their, their motivation, why they started this project. Uh, so they, they had a need. Um, um, so they, NVIDIA itself have, has um, huge clusters uh, for basically AI workflows and so on. And um, all the solutions did not meet their needs so far. So they need um, a container solu solution with uh, no overhead, so need for high performance. Um, the support for Docker images, because Docker images are the standard, to, so to say. Uh, soft cluster multi-tenancy. And of course, because it's NVIDIA, they need an easy way to expose NVIDIA GPUs. And of course, also because it's NVIDIA Mellanox InfiniBand cards. Um, yeah, uh, the resources isolation has to be done by C groups. And they want also, they want to be able to do uh, multi-node jobs. And uh, of course, all the, all the other stuff. And, they are, um, yeah, they, they told us, uh, and I believed them, and I still believe them, that no existing container runtime fulfilled um, all their requirements, so um, they built it on their own. So um, the sources of this, um, this slide is basically from a FOSTEM um, talk given in 2020. So then uh, how do they, dis they describe Enroot and Pyxis? So first of all, what, what are these tools? So Enroot is a container runtime, um, and it turns traditional container images in unprivileged sandboxes. Uh, it can be thought of something like um, user space switch root, uh, change root. It is very light, lightweight and performant. Um, and of course, it has, has built in GPU, NVIDIA GPU support. And uh, they, they told us there's no performance impact. And Pyxis, uh, is, it's just a, a plugin which integrates Enroot into Slurm. And it, uh, it's, it's a Spank plugin. So it adds just a couple of command line arguments uh, to SRUN. Um, and it, it also allows to run these Enroot containers on one or more nodes. And of course, uh, MPI support via this, this API. And um, interesting, this um, source for this uh, slide here comes from the, the multi-node bird user guide, um, where they already in the September 2019 um, described to use Enroot and Pyxis in order to run this multi-node bird um, work, workload. And yeah, so that's basically how they sell um, Enroot and Pyxis. And a, a third source from NVIDIA, so um, how they describe Enroot and Pyxis. So it's a fully, fully unprivileged change route. And you can do a remap, so root remapping. 
Uh, however, it's not possible if the if the container is already running. You can can't uh, switch to root inside a container. So you have to exit and uh, stop the container and restart the container and then uh, choose uh, to be root or not. Um, it's standalone, so there's no daemon or extra processes. It's uh, very simple. Uh, little isolation. I would say there's no isolation um, overhead. Um, and uh, the, the remaining points uh, are already yeah, mentioned, I think. So that's how NVIDIA describes Enroot. And uh, interestingly, so basically maybe that's the reason for their development. So here there's a competence by the diagram uh, of, of Enroot. So um, interesting here is where they give uh, Enroot a 100% um, usability of, and collaboration development friendly, low overhead, weak isolation, and so on. And it's, uh, so here to, for comparison, it's Elixir, Docker, Podman, Singularity, and Charlie Cloud. And um, well, basically that was their motivation to start developing uh, Enroot. And yeah, maybe that's, that's of interest. And also how they see, for instance, uh, this uh, Singularity, uh, well, I, it, well, that's that's Nvidia's point of view. Maybe um, it's discussable, but it gives us us a first hint uh, why they choose to to write their own uh, solution. So um, to get to know Enroot and Pyxis, I would say let's quickly. It, it's very easy to use, so let's just jump in and start with examples. So there's always um, basically three steps: you import a container, you create a container and you start a container. So here on this slide, uh, I show you how to import uh, a container image. So basically that's the, the command uh, line, enroot import. Then you have um, this, this uh, Docker. Um, uh, that means it, it has to import uh, from, from a Docker registry. And in this case, I want to import Alpine uh, Linux. And this command pulls the latest Alpine image from the Docker Hub, which is the default registry. And it results in a file which is called Alpine uh, squash, dot squash. And yeah, so the second example is basically the same, but here you can, I will just uh, mark it in, in yellow. Uh, you can also define other registries. So the default registry is Docker Hub. Um, in this case, that's the NVIDIA's uh, NGC registry. Um, and the, the last um, examples here, you can also import from a running Docker daemon. So if you have, for instance, uh, a Docker uh, running on your machine and you have the, the image MyAlpine, you can also import uh, from the local Docker daemon or from Podman, from a local Podman registry. And this will also result in a single file in a squash file. So if you, uh, when you uh, have this squash file, you can uh, create a container. Um, creating just means that this uh, squash file will be unpacked uh, simply to this Enroot dat data path. And the default data path is uh, local share Enroot. And that's it, that's your root file system. And um, yeah, then you can start it. Um, so how to start an Enroot container? It's the, the command is Enroot start, and then you have some some arguments. Uh, this means uh, read write uh, mode. So you can not only start a container, but you can also start and enter the container and uh, do some uh, uh, changes within the container, and they are persist persistent. Um, um, as I already told you, you, you can't switch to root inside a container, but you have to uh, decide whether or not you are a normal unprivileged user or uh, admin or root inside a container. If you want to have admin rights inside a running container, you have to start it with minus minus root. And um, yeah, that's maybe interesting. Next point, um, how to mount um, uh, volumes or um, directories. It's uh, just with the minus m argument, um, local dir, um, and then the, the uh, directory within the container. And um, it's you can add a comma-separated list. Um, you can 
mount um, many many um, directories like this. And the last uh, thing is you, you can't only uh, start, of course, a, a terminal bash shell. Um, you can also just start like for normal containers, uh, just start application. In this case here, I start Jupyter Lab. So straightforward. Uh, yeah, nothing which would be um, yeah uh, unusual. So this is um, an ex uh, example that NVIDIA gives us on their GitHub site. It, it is basically exactly the same, maybe a little bit more um, uh, information comes here. So uh, the thing here, you can also put some authentication tokens uh, inside this import uh, command. Um, then you import it, you create it, you start it. And uh, what is very interesting, uh, you can even um, Use uh, I, th I, th I think that is uh, yeah I, I was a little bit surprised that that works out of the box, but you can also leverage the X server from the host. So basically, uh, with these commands here, you can also start a graphical um, application. And um, yeah, in this case, it's an nBody um, um, yeah, example. And with the remove uh, command, you can then remove the the container, or you can also manually delete it from this directory here. And then there are some uh, additional features. So when we talk about exporting and transferring, um, uh, that's also possible. So we can uh, create this squash file um, from an image, so from a from container. So this is my my container. I called it my image, but basically that's my my container. And I can create a squash file from this uh, uh, root file system from this container. And what is really a, a nice or cool feature is you can also create, create self-extracting bundles from a container. So um, basically, you have this squash file here. And you can um, bundle it to a self-extracting run, run file. And you can copy this uh, run file where, to wherever you want. And uh, you can run this um, container even if nroot is not installed. So basically, you could uh, simply uh, pack this run file, create this run file somewhere, uh, copy it to the HPC system, and uh, start this run file. It uh, unpacks itself, it extracts itself, and you can run it uh, wherever you want. And uh, there's no need that nroot is installed remotely. I think that's a cool feature. And um, this is just, um, it has been all um, root. So, and now let's have a look at Pyxis. So, Pyxis is the integration of um, root into Slurm. And what is it does, so when we install this Pyxis, it's just um, a couple of uh, new command line arguments available. Um, in, in this example here, we just include a container image, uh, for instance, CentOS. And then uh, it's it's just started like that. So S run, then this container specific arguments, and then uh, in this case we just uh, show uh, etc OS release. Um, we can also combine this uh, container specific arguments with uh, in this case here uh, with the other registry, so not the default registry. Or what is also possible, we can also uh, use um, squash files which uh, are located locally uh, so there's no need to um, yeah to download the images so basically what what sran and this pyxis does it um, uh, downloads the image it uh, unpacks the squash file and then it starts the container and that's all integrated in this um, sran uh, so in this pyxis uh, that's very convenient and um, basically that's the command line arguments that are added to SRAN. So here you can uh, define a container image, uh, which might maybe uh, even a Docker registry or a local squash file. Um, if you give the container a name, uh, for instance, my Alpine or something, then um, um, a persistent um, um, root. A container is created, which is which is named Pyxis underscore, and then the name that's specified. 
So when you restart this um, Slurm job again and uh, provide the same container name and same container image, uh, it doesn't download the, the, the image anymore, but it takes directly the already ready um, container that you already have in your home directory. And there you can also define whether or not to be root or if you want to mount home directory and so on. So, and uh, the last how-to um, uh, is to install. And uh, the takeaway me me message here is it's easy. So, um, basically for Enroot, uh, you can build it from source, which uh, is very quick, or you directly uh, use the RPM um, files provided by NVIDIA. It's available on GitHub. And for Pyxis, it's... Um, there are no uh, RPMs, but you can really, um, it, it's built within a minute or something. <clears throat> you can uh, just um, download the repository, uh, type make RPM, and that's it. Basically, it's a four line, and then Pyxis is installed. And the build dependencies are pretty standard, so there's nothing unusual here. Too long, didn't read, it's easy. And uh, now, basically, that's the center slide. Uh, unfortunately, it's only one slide, but nevertheless. So what are our experience so far? So um, what I experienced um, is uh, so far that there's no corruption of file permissions. Uh, we had that kind of uh, happenings. Uh, for instance, when we tried uDocker, there was always corrupted file permissions and so on. Uh, we do not need uh, to give special permissions. So uh, for singularity, we have also this um, uh, the, the need that we have to um, put them into a special group. Uh, and it works um, out of the box for uh, all of our uh, architectures, Intel, AMD, and uh, Fujitsu A64. And um, of course, it has uh, out of the box GPU support for NVIDIA. Um, but I tried it with my um, private AMD uh, graphics card and also with our um, MI100, or with, with the MI100s that we have, and uh, it just works out of the box. So there are no um, special settings needed or something. Um, yeah, if you think of uh, Enroot as a uh, yeah, unprivileged change route, it's, it's, it's more or less might be clear, but it, it's nevertheless, it's it's a nice thing that GPU support works out of the box with any additional, yeah, um, f uh, yeah, um, t uh, tricks, uh, tweaks, and so on. And uh, easy installation, and it's very, very lightweight. And what concerns our customers experience? So we have had one team, uh, they switched to Singularity. I don't exactly... Uh, I don't know exactly why, but um, basically they uh, they got their solutions more uh, quicker with Singularity than with Enroot. And uh, we have very few tickets that might be good or bad. Uh, I think it's rather neutral. I don't think there are many users out there which are using currently um, yeah, Enroot or uh, uh, containers in general. And what we didn't try extensively or not at all yet, is um, multi-node behavior and performance measurements uh, from what I saw from from little first um, yeah, performance comparisons. Uh, so there were no no uh, in, impacts at all concerning performance. Uh, but of course, we have to um, look at that more precisely. Uh, yeah, support is also interesting and important. So. Um, there was a use case from us, or so for us, uh, we needed the S-Batch functionality. Uh, so basically, Enroot and Pyxis only work with S-Run currently. And there are some reasons why uh, S-Batch does not work, because S-Run would be, an, it would be necessary that S-Run is available from within the containers. That's not that easy, it seems to. So nevertheless, we needed S-Batch functionality for our use case, Jupyter Hub. And it was uh, amazingly quick. So after three days, uh, I had uh, first um, a fix um, for the for GitHub, GitHub project. And um, uh, unfortunately, this, this, this support for SBatch uh, is only for single node, but nevertheless. And um, these guys are um, 
yeah seems to be very keen on on helping um yeah so that was a very good experience so and that's um, a little example so a proof of concept bring your own jupiter so at krt we have different um, hpc uh, systems uh, where we run a jupiter hub and via this um, yeah, resource selector you can uh, click whether you want to have GPUs and the number of CPUs and so on. And um, I, I tried, or I, I thought it might be interesting and useful if you can bring your own uh, Jupyter Lab instance, uh, which is containerized. And um, some some use cases, for instance, is if if you want to use optimized software stacks, for instance, for instance. Uh, Intel provides uh, optimized TensorFlow uh, software stacks. Of course, NVIDIA provides their own registry with also um, optimized TensorFlow versions. And this is also the case for AMD. And so I just um, included in, inside our standard Jupyter Hub instance, I included a so-called container mode. And you can just define the the registry and the, 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 the name of this um, um, Docker image, and then um, Slurm or uh, Pyxis will download and unpack and start this container. And basically, that was very yeah straightforward and easy. There was just a couple of, of lines to add to our standard Jupyter Hub uh, plus batch spawner infrastructure. So we, we added this Pyxis plus Nroot functionality. So in the options form, so options form is basically what you see here. This is all uh, within one HTML file. Uh, we had to uh, add these text boxes where we uh, just collect the, the container name and registry name and so on. In the Jupyter Hub config, uh, we had then to uh, add these um, container specific arguments for Slurm. And um, yeah, so in order to make every um, image um, able to uh, yeah, um, connect to our running Jupyter Hub instance, basically three Python packages are necessary. This is Jupyter Hub, Jupyter Lab, and Batch Spawner. And so basically you can connect any um, container and any uh, Docker image which contains a Python installation can be used um, to and and be connected to our Jupyter Hub, and well, that's that's a working proof of concept. And maybe um, well, if for what it, that might be an interesting uh, case for 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 workshops or something uh, um, to prepare a ready to run image and then just to start this uh, Docker image uh, with all the workshop. Um, uh, material uh, necessary. So that was from from our from example. And then um, the last slide, the open questions and summary. So um, how to build containers? I mean, this is clear. We can we can import um, um, containers. We can modify them. We can export them to this squash file. Uh, but the question is, is, is not answered how to then export it. So we can uh, copy the squash file files around. That's, of course, possible. Um, but it's not possible to push the modified uh, container images then back again to the, the registry. Uh, the question as batch and multi-node is a work in progress, I think. Um, also, what is important is um, maybe just jump he to here, uh, is it future proof? Uh, how big is the community? Uh, I have the impression currently uh, Enrod and Pyxis is uh, not known at all. Um, that uh, brings us to here. So uh, is there an acceptance to use this um, Enrod if Singularity, or now called Aptainer, um, which gained visibility now, especially by joining the Linux Foundation, so uh, will our customers be um, yeah, ready and uh, willing to use this uh, kind of niche solution? Um, our summary, however, it's, it's very slim and has a small footprint, which is good. 
the GPU support is excellent for all of uh, all types of uh, graphics cards that we we have at our uh, clusters. Um, maybe it's not the ultimate solution yet. Um, maybe that has to do something with singularities, um, yeah, visibility now. And but uh, we have to keep an eye on on this solution. That's it from my side. Um, uh, questions are of course welcome. Please feel free and ask. Okay, there are some questions in the chat. There's a question. Uh, if you mount local directories together uh, with uh, yeah. root, how is access to the file since the mount is limited? So you, you only root inside a container. Outside of the container, it's just uh, you're the normal user. So it's it's mapped. I hope this answers the question. So uh, outside the container, you're just uh, the normal normal user with no privileged access. Benjamin, did that answer your question? Not fully. Um, yeah. So even if you're then root inside a container, you have no yeah. full read access to the mounted directory. It depends. Which directory do you mean? As I understand it, you can mount any local directory into the nroot container, right? No. So you're normal, just a normal user, yeah, and you can. Um, only mount and uh, read uh, directories um, for yeah, where you have the access rights. So this root um, mapping is only inside a container. So um, so there's no danger that you uh, get um, um, improved privilege or um, yeah. So yeah, but I mean, you could, for instance, mount slash home, yeah. Where yes. all the user homes yeah. are, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. but of course you can have re read access to slash home, but yeah. only then to your home directory there, but not exactly. to all other user homes. Ex exactly. Yeah. But so can you just mount root home, and then have root access inside the container to all home directories? No, 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 because the wrapping, uh, the, the mapping happens as as far as I know, the ha mapping happens inside of the container. And so to to the outside of the container, there there's so you have no so root does not mean that you are root outside, and there's not uh, no set UID bits or something. So it's I think that's that's quite um, safe here. So there's no es escalation. Maybe I can help. Uh, um, I use yeah, uh, 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 nearly the same uh, with my uh, root VMs. So in the VM, I'm root, and uh, we use SSHFS uh, with user privileges to the host, and I can mount the the, the full uh, slash uh, uh, file system, but I can only access uh, the fi files I uh, have access to as user on the host system. So this is nearly the same. Mm -hmm. So it's basically the same way Docker does it, like changing the user ID. Or spoofing it. So. I, um... uh, the problem uh, with Docker is that you are in the Docker group, and uh, with that, you have uh, the access to the root file system. This is not the same. Okay. Yeah. I and also, in, sorry. In in Docker, you can also switch. So in in root, you can't switch. You can't do a sudo and then be root inside the in root container. You have to stop the container and restart it again with with minus minus root. Sorry, I interrupted somebody. I think it's similar to this, uh, what, what Benjamin presented with this uh, uh, UID mapping in the ETC file and also what uh, singularity, singularity does when you use this fake root command, which is also just a root mapping to the user. Okay. Yeah. Uh, thank you.